What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Now I know it's been a long time uh, since I've uploaded any vlog style video. Uh, it's just been a crazy couple of months. Originally I had planned to change out the tires on the Challenger and go do a drift day, but that didn't even happen because I just got a lot of stuff going on between the military, school, working, uh, things just kind of got, I don't wanna say out of hand, but I just couldn't find any more time to get things done. So drove the car yesterday, gave it a quick, uh, a warm up cycle and I drove it around town. I even got it inspected. So for you guys, I keep calling me out that my car hasn't been registered in two years. I finally got it done, okay? So you can stop harassing me about that. So I got the car inspected um, and basically that's all I've been really able to do. Other things I've been working on is of course, as you guys know, the CJ7 has been here. I've actually done a lot of things on the Jeep. I wired up the LED lights, everything's wired up, cleaned, tucked inside underneath the dash um, and figured out the overheating issue. So we're gonna dive right into that and not waste any more time. Okay, just to bring some of you up to speed, my Jeep is a 1983 CJ7 with the AMC 258 uh, in line six. And these motors came in a lot of um, different vehicles. So the water pumps all kind of look the same, right? So this is obviously the new one. That's the old one. And they look very similar. Now, depending on the belt routing that you have, right so in our case we have a v-belt set up well depending which way this water pump needs to spin so you have the v-belt and you have your serpentine set up now this water pump see the veins are pointed to the left and on this water pump it is aftermarket it's a flow cooler brand the veins are actually pointed uh, to the right so what was happening was we had this water pump on it but it was actually for a serpentine setup and not a V-belt set up, so it was spinning the wrong way. And because it was spinning the wrong way, the Jeep was overheating. So I went ahead and ordered this flow cooler water pump, um, and I'll tell you why. All right, so I got the flow cooler water pump for two reasons. Uh, one, we live in Texas, and it gets really hot here, and I want the Jeep to run cool. Two, when you're crawling at lower speeds, you don't really get a lot of airflow through that radiator. So when we are crawling or on trails where you're not going to slow in the Texas heat, I wanna be able to have the Jeep run cool and not worry about any overheating issues. So basically that's why I got the flow cooler versus just another OE replacement. So anyways, let's not waste any more time. Let's get this water pump on there. All right, PSA. So I took off the thermostat housing uh, so I can put in a new thermostat and redo the gasket. And the old gasket on there is stuck on pretty good. So PSA, always have a uh, first aid kit handy. So I just cut my thumb cleaning that gasket. Now it's not just electrical tape. I went inside, I used hydrogen peroxide, I used alcohol wipe, I put a band-aid on there. But you know those band-aids never stick, so I just used a little electrical tape to hold the band-aid down. But anyways, I'm gonna soak that and put the rest of the water pump together, and that's the last thing I'm gonna do. So yeah, jab me pretty good, not a big deal. Just working a little too fast, sometimes you just gotta slow down, so let's get back to it. All right guys, so yesterday I ended up filming a bunch of video of me pulling the Jeep out, driving it, uh, getting it warmed up, topping off the coolant, all that kind of stuff. But I have no idea. The footage is just messed up. So what I'm going to do basically is just kind of talk about what did go down um, and then just take it from there. So everything on the Jeep's cooling system went, you know, 100% okay. Got it warmed up. The coolant's topped off. Got it uh, bled. And I drove it around for like, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes and everything went nice and smooth. Uh, but when I got back to the garage, I could smell raw fuel. And basically what I found is that the return fuel line on the driver's side of the Jeep on the frame that goes back to the fuel tank has a small pinhole in it and it was leaking raw fuel, but it's not a lot because it is the return line. Um, and I found that it really does it once I turn the Jeep off, whatever fuel is left over is running back down. And that's kind of when the leak starts happening. Since I plan on replacing that line, I went ahead and ordered all three lines. Back in 2020, during the pandemic, getting these fuel lines was difficult. And when we had the body off the Jeep, they were all on back order. So we reused the lines, uh, the original lines, and now I'm scared of the integrity of those lines. So I went and ordered all three, so we dropped the tank one time and replaced all three lines at the same time. So in a nutshell, that's what happened. Uh, I videoed all of it and it's all gone. So kind of a bummer, it's the next day, but it's all good. So if you guys like these videos, you know what to do, leave a comment below. And if you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. Until next time guys, peace out.